Tolong, tolong. Tidak. Ah, ah, ah. Tuh ya, tuh Hello everyone. Uh, do I need a mic? Can you hear me without the mic? Person at the back. No. Okay, I'll use the mic. So uh, good evening, everyone. This is actually my first technical talk. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Hui Jing slacked me. I was like, hey, can you talk about talk CSS? I'm like, oh, what am I gonna talk about? Uh, she untwist me into this, by the way. So. So the basically, basically she was like, can you talk? I'm like, what am I going to talk about? Anything CSS related? Okay, like, noted with thanks, thank you. So um, please be kind to me. Today is um, a how-to on responsive tables. So a little bit about me. I'm currently a front-end developer at a startup called JobCred. We are based out of Block 71, which is just one MRT stop away at one off. So in my day-to-day, -day, I actually handle UI, UX, uh, mockups, like product workflows, and of course, front-end development. So our current product is actually a platform that enables our clients to carry out AI-powered skills profiling to inform entire organizations of their skills profiles at the individual, team, and department level to enable effective interventions. So the TLDR of that is basically, um, we'll tell you how well your students or your employees are doing in terms of skills and then uh, oh should you be promoting someone should you be sending someone to train um is there uh, we help you in succession planning etc so a little bit more is that because we work closely with organizations such as uh, ntu uh, our api is really new, being used by GovTech, so we are not very b2c we're more b2b so um the content of this talk and how it came about so basically, I was tasked by my team to make our HTML tables responsive. So in our admin dashboard interface for our clients, we do use quite a bit, fair bit of HTML tables. And one day, a client requested, uh, we cannot access your product on our desktops due to our internal internet restrictions. Uh, so uh, we are only able to use mobile um, so, okay, then one of our interns was like going through all the pages, making sure they're responsive, and then he was like, oh, hey, actually the tables, right, uh, they don't look very nice lah. And I was like, oh crap. So, okay, so we gotta make the tables responsive, or at least look good on a small device or a smaller viewport. So, a little bit more about our tech stack and our product is that uh, we are about three or four years old, and we are built on HTML, CSS, jQuery, and Bootstrap. Bootstrap still works, guys, so you don't need to fix what's not broken. And backend is Laravel and PHP. So the content in our tables, especially on the admin dashboard, is actually generated using a for each loop from our database. So first way of doing it is to basically, instead of using HTML tables, we'll just use divs and bootstrap columns instead. So what it looks like is, whoops, kind of like this. So uh, this is built using bootstrap and columns. And you can see like the smaller it gets, like it still looks okay. Like it's not bad. Uh, but so like it's kind of okay-ish, but to be frank, like there's a lot of repeating information like in each card and it looks and because of that, it looks really cluttered. And to be very frank, it looks really ugly as well. Like zero over 10, do not recommend. Like, no, it doesn't add any like value to efficiency. So, okay, that's not gonna work. What are we gonna do? So actually I referenced Hui Jing. Where's Hui Jing? Hi. So I actually referenced her very brilliant article on Smashing Magazine. It will be on my last slide. It's very great. So her article also uh, wrote about uh, how are you gonna deal with tables on smaller viewports. So this is actually one of the methods that I tried out. So what happens here is that uh, from a normal table, so you style it in a way that as the viewport gets smaller, the headers are then collapsed to the left and then the user will then scroll horizontally for more information. So just to show you what I mean. So this is a table, right? And then as it gets smaller, you can now scroll and see and the header is fixed to the left, so you can very quickly reference like, okay, so that is that. So what's your fourth? Cool. So 
Let me just refer to my notes. Okay, so how does the style scroll method work? Uh, basically, you apply display flex to the table, which makes the T head and the T body both flex children. So if they're both flex children, they will be by default laid out next to each other on the same flex line. And then after that, you also apply a horizontal scroll onto the T body elements contents. And then you make the T body element a flex container. So when you do that, you actually make all the rows or all the TR flex children as well. So that means everything will be laid out in a single flex line. And you also have to have every table cell have their display set to block instead of the default table cell. So it's, well, it, it would work on a smaller viewport, so it's like kind of responsive, and there's a pretty cool fixed header effect, so you can refer to what is what. Um, but unfortunately, due to the type of data we retrieve from the backend, so each header element will not be the same size as its corresponding like TD element. So it looks very out of place, looks very weird. And the main feedback from the same intern who brought up this issue was that, oh, it doesn't look that pretty. So I was like, uh, okay, fine, let's, let's, let's try another way. Okay, so the third way, which ultimately was the way that is currently being used on our product, is that you style the table in a way that after your viewport hits a certain breakpoint, it will kind of look like this. So let me just show you what I mean again on the code pen. So, so a very nice table. Okay, ooh, oh, now it's a list. Very nice, very neat, very clean. Title, author, and everything. So how this works is that, um, so as I mentioned, each element is generated using a for each loop. So when you add this attribute, data th, and then you label it with the header name, uh, it'll be generated programmatically, so you don't have to do it for each row that's going to appear. So that is what you should do in your HTML. And then in your CSS media query, you put this, you put this part in. So what this means is that before every TD element in your TD body, you apply this content attribute data th. So how that comes out in responsive view is that you'll then have that attribute as a label on the left before your TD element. So yes, that's, that's how CSS works. That's the magic. So it's obviously going to work pretty well on a smaller viewport, so it's definitely responsive. And you can have consistent style on your mobile devices because you are writing this style in your media query. So therefore, you won't even affect the original style of, uh, of what you see on desktop. So since the team did accept this uh, method and we pushed it to production, I can't for sure say there are cons, but someone actually told me today like, oh, but then it's, it's not a responsive table. So it's okay. Like, the, the main part of the story is that we made something that our clients can use on their mobile phones. So just to end things off, uh, thank you, Hui Jing. Hui Jing, where's Hui Jing? Okay, Hui Jing's busy. Anyway, thank you very much to Hui Jing Smashing, article, uh, Smashing Magazine article because that is how I managed to solve this problem at work and that is how I'm giving you this talk as well. Um, and then uh, it was one of the articles in Hui Jing's article that led me to this data TH method. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Drinking game, uh, mention my name, then drink. Uh. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, uh, please give her a round of applause for her.